Hey, my fourth grade friends. Today we are going to be going through PowerPoint again. We're going to use the skills that you practiced in your groups, and this time you're going to be following the directions that I give you in this video to complete an activity that you will turn in to me by the end of library. So let's get started. We always start off by going to our Office 365 account. You can get there by opening up your Start menu, going to Google Chrome, which is the rainbow circle, although mine has disappeared, and so if yours has to, look for the gray square that says Google Chrome. We'll open up the internet browser and head to Office 365. If you forgot how to do this, you'll find it right on our school's homepage at the very top in the tiny little letters, Office 365. Once inside the portal, it may ask you to log in. Don't forget, your login is your SN number with your password. We're now going to go to PowerPoint. We talked about PowerPoint online for the last few weeks. You've been practicing making great ones. The one we're going to make today is brand new. Once you've opened it, I would like you to select a blank presentation. Your very first step is to give the presentation a name. Now we've covered this several times, however, today I'm going to remind you how to name your presentation. By clicking in this top orange bar on the section that says presentation, see how it says rename file? If I click into that and hit delete, the words go away and I can give it a name. Your job will be to name your file with your teacher's name, and then a dash, and your name. It, a true example, if you were to be in Mrs. Boxley's classroom, you could say Boxley dash Jane. That would be a basic example of how I would like you to name today's presentation. Your next step is to make your very own title slide. Today I'm giving you the permission to create your own design and give this your own title for your movie. We're going to be making stop motion films like we practiced, but this time you're going to get all of the extra steps. So step one to creating a title slide is to make sure you give your movie a title. Mine is going to be called The Dancing Sunflower oh, by Mrs. Benner. The Dancing Sunflower. That's today's, my title slide. Then I'm going to pick a design. Perhaps I'll use my lightning ideas. It's going to give me a few suggestions based on what I wrote. I like the idea of searching for a picture. To do that, I might come down here and look for the dancing sunflower suggestions. Hmm, that one's a good one. And then I'll pick a design like this one to decorate my slide. The next step is to add a new slide. So I'm going to close the design features and open up a new slide. To do that, under the Home button, there is a new slide. Click New Slide. The second slide you're going to want to click is a blank slide. And then add slide. This is going to be our base slide for the entire animation. This is the slide we are going to decorate and then reproduce as many times as needed to create our animation. On the background of this slide, I'm going to insert a picture. I would like to insert an online picture from Bing. Now, I'm doing a dancing sunflower, so I would like my dancing sunflower to be in nature. So I'm going to have a forest as my backdrop. 
Hmm, which forest is the best image? I like this one right here. I'm going to select it by making sure it has an orange box around it and click the insert button. It's going to insert it, but it says it's too big. What could I do? Well, I'm going to accept that and I'm going to go back to my online pictures and try again. Maybe that file's not quite right, so I'm going to try forest, oh. and I'm going to pick, hmm, I like this one. Let's try that image. Perfect. Now the idea slide is going to come up. Because I want this to be my backdrop, like the set in which my dancing flower is going to dance, I'm going to pick a full image and then close the design features. Now I'm going to insert a secondary image on top, an image from Bing. Sunflower. Hmm, looking for the right sunflower. Which one, which one? I think this one has a great smiley face, or perhaps I'm going to use, I think this one will be great. Insert that sunflower. Now my design features are going to suggest I do something that models the picture. I don't want to do that because I want this image to be floating separately from my backdrop. That's important. Make sure when you insert your second picture, you do not pick a design feature. Please click the X on the designs. This is my sunflower. She's going to start right here. Okay. The next step of my animation is to right click on the slide and say copy. And below the slide, I'm going to right click and say paste. Ah, now we are on online. So if that doesn't work, which like I showed you, it wouldn't, we need to use a keyboard shortcut. A keyboard shortcut is when you use your keyboard and not your mouse to control what happens in the PowerPoint. So to cut, I would use the control button and the X button at the exact same time. But we want to copy, which is control plus C. And then to paste, we want to use control plus V. When I say plus, that means that you're holding the control button down and the V button at the exact same time. So let's try that again. I'm going to highlight it so it's orange put down my control button and my C button, click below it, put down my control button and my V button. It now pastes an exact duplicate, but I am going to move the second slide, slide three, a little bit to the right, and I'm gonna turn the animation a little bit using my spiral here. See how I have my arrows, four-way arrows? Can move them right up, down, left, right. There's also this circle refresh arrow. If I use that, I can kind of turn it and it's moved to the side like it's dancing. I'm now gonna click on my orange slide and say Control C and click below, Control plus V. And I'm gonna move my sunflower again on slide four. A little bit to the right and now I'm moving it backwards. You'll notice a progression in the slides. This is important. Your task is to make 20 slides showing movement on each slide across the story. Once you've completed that, you will want to come back to this video and watch the second half. And that'll teach you how to add transitions and animations that make it move on its own, causing it to look just like an actual video. 
But right now, I want you to pause this video and go complete all of the tasks you have been assigned. Create a PowerPoint, name it, insert a title slide, pick a backdrop on your animation blank slides, and pick something that you're going to make move. And make 20 slides. When you get back, you're going to see my slides look as if I have completed all of those applications. Okay, head out and pause this video and keep working. If you need to rewatch it, be sure to watch this video over again until you know how to follow the directions. Welcome back. Now I am assuming you have finished all 20 slides where you have created an animation where the character in your animation is jumping back and forth or doing some kind of crazy thing that you've decided to have your character do. This is how we're going to animate it so it runs all on its own. Right now when we hit present, which is this little slideshow button down here, you'll notice I have to click each button to make my presentation dance. This is great, but it doesn't run itself. So what we want to do is have it run itself. To do that, we can't work in Office Online. And so we need to open up a very special program called PowerPoint, the desktop client. To do that, you have to click a special button. It's this open in PowerPoint button. Now, when I open up this PowerPoint, it's very important to follow the directions that I show you. Follow along with me. You'll click on the open in PowerPoint. It'll ask you, are you sure? And you would say, yes, open in PowerPoint. While it's opening, you may have to sign in. Sometimes it has issues syncing. Right now, I'm going to ignore that extra message and work on my PowerPoint. This is my title slide. On my title slide, I want to make sure that it transitions all on its own. A transition is a change between 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, things like that. We're going to click on the first slide and go to transition. Your next job is to click and turn off mouse clicking. Most PowerPoints need you to click on the screen to change the slides. We want to turn it off by unclicking them on a mouse click. The second thing you're going to do is you're going to click turn on after so many seconds. I like to make each slide last half a second. This is minutes, this is seconds, this is half a second. Point 0.5 is half of a second. You could make your slide last one second. That also is a very easy thing to do. Let's start by making your slide last one second. Now, we're going to click on the next slide. Do you notice what changed? It says mouse click and after. So we're going to unclick mouse click and we're going to say after one second. Do you see the pattern? Mouse click after one second. Your job is to repeat this for all 20 slides. When you have completed it, you will notice that it runs automatically all on its own. Allow me to show you in a second. Now that I've completed the animation by having each transition happen after one second, I'm going to return to my title slide and go to slideshow. To preview this from beginning, you're going to notice that this time I'm not using my mouse at all. It runs all on its own. We're going to play from beginning.
it's going to dance just like we told it to in the store or in our animation all on its own. This is your challenge to complete today. Once you have gotten the animation to complete, just like I showed you, your job is to now share it with me. We are going to make sure that it's saved by clicking the Save button in this top orange bar. That's the symbol that looks like an old floppy disk with a refresh. Once you've clicked the Save button, you're going to then click the Share button. You're going to click the Share button and do these following steps. The first thing you're going to see is see this section that says people you spe specify can view? We need to change that. It needs to say people in the Kent School District. Apply. Now it's going to find me. If you type in Benner, comma, M, you're going to notice that there's several. There's Mr. Benner and myself. You're going to click the one that says Mrs. M Benner Melissa. Now, you might have nothing show up here with a little magnifying glass. Click on that magnifying glass and that will help you send me, find my name. Then you're going to write your name. You're going to say, hi, Mrs. Benner. Here is my PowerPoint movie called The Dancing Sunflower. Now yours will not be called the Dancing Sunflower. Yours will be called uh, whatever you have imagined to create for yourself. Then you're going to sign it. Signed. In my case, I'm sending to myself. So I'm going to say signed me. But you would sign it with your own name. So I know who is sending me this email. This is an appropriate, kind way to send an email. Then you click the send button. This is going to let me know that you have completely finished your activity, that you have done everything that I have asked you to do and made a full movie. If you have completed the full movie and I have a chance to look at your full movie because you sent it to me correctly, I would love to share these movies with your families and your teacher. Thank you for completing this activity. If you have questions, rewatch the video or ask me for help. Great work today. If you don't finish, we'll have time to finish next week.